is going on, everybody? Bobby Five Flying Solo going to do a really quick uh, rundown of tonight's slate, the uh, Wednesday night. And basically, we are loaded with pitching. Uh, there's tons of options. You can get creative with them because there's guys with upside that are going to be lower owned. My favorites as of right now are Hunter Green and Alcantara for different reasons. And my next favorites would be Otani followed by Manoa. I also will mix in some Kopech and some Justin Steele on DraftKings. On FanDuel, it's a lot more straightforward. Um, I think that you're probably just paying up for the guys you want. And the guys who I have right now are Hunter Green, Otani. Uh, I do like Steele a little bit. He's a little savings if you want to do that. Um, but I don't mind paying all the way up for Alcantara, uh, especially, but or Manoa. But I think Alcantara would be my preferred one at lower ownership than Otani. Um, however, I do have the most Alcantara. I have more Alcantara than I do Otani. I do have Otani in my big buy-in right now on FanDuel, but uh, I really think that you, you, can, you can really select from these guys and, and get creative uh, just on if pricing matters. Going back to something I was saying in Discord earlier today, stacking on DraftKings is becoming less and less of an optimal way to play. The guy who won the million last night, you know, he didn't have any more than two players from one team on a 15-game slate, a 14-game slate, whatever it was. Um, I'm not saying that's what you should do all the time. I just think this full five man stack thing is a very lazy way to play DFS. And I think it applies to different parts of the season. I think it makes some sense er very uh, early in the season, very late in the season would be my favorite times to five man stack. I think I'm gonna be doing a lot more four, two, one, ones, four, three, ones, three, three, twos, that type of thing on my DK builds going forward. Just because I'm noticing, I mean, just with an incredibly high strikeout rate, teams all still sort of, you know, mostly not really being out of it yet. Not many people bringing in all these minor leaguers and all the all the call ups that we get in September. Those are more the times where I want a full five man stack because I'm trying to target a situation. I mean, look at what we've done with the Dodgers the last couple of days. The Dodgers, you know, have basically you know ruined a lot of lineups, and they, uh, you know, they've been the highest total by I think a good couple runs at least each of the last two days. And I just think there's an argument to be made to, to trying to get some of the best hitters in with some correlation, but not necessarily going for the five man stacks, especially when people just five man stack guys in a row, because that extra run and RBI don't mean nearly as much on DraftKings as they do on FanDuel. On FanDuel, I think still going with a four man stack as a main thing on, on a main slate is, is the right way to go. Um, I do think there's some arguments for some three, three twos over there as well, but the correlation just means a lot more over there on FanDuel. So I wanted to talk about that just for a minute. So I'm going to be doing, I don't have any five man stacks tonight, actually. The teams that I'm going to be stacking in the four or three man's uh, some cases, two man stacks and getting different exposures and different lineups to all of them. I like Minnesota, especially the stolen base upside against uh, well, the stolen base and power upside uh, against uh, Cal Quantrill. Quantrill has basically, you know, you can run all over him. He's been giving up lots of power, especially Buxton stands out here for me, but Kirilov, um, you're going to have some exposure to Gary Sanchez, some exposure to Kepler, uh, some exposure to Polanco. Those are the guys who I would be heaviest on. I do like mixing in some Dodgers. It's probably worth noting the wind's coming in pretty hard from the left today, even though it's hot in Colorado. So I'm going to side more with the lefties than I am the righties for the Dodgers. Muncie, Freeman, Lux, Bellinger, those would be my favorites. Um, actually, in that, uh, in that order, except for switch Bellinger and Lux, I like B Bellinger a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to be laying off more of the righties from the Dodgers and more playing the lefties to, but again, it will just be complementary parts to, you know, a three man or, you know, two or three man stacks, maybe a four man here and there with the Dodgers, but mostly it's going to be two and three men. Uh, I also think that people are going to play some Toronto tonight. I think that they're kind of interesting against Pavetta. I sort of like getting a mini stack, uh, Atlanta. I like, you know, either catcher with Ozuna, uh, you could throw Riley into the, the three man stack. I think that's a good way to go. I think that uh, I mentioned Minnesota already. I, I do think, you know, Toronto, the obvious guys, but again, I'm not quite as high on Toronto as I think maybe some of the other field is going to be. They're not going to be that owned, but not a little bit. I like Miami a lot tonight against Palente. I uh, wish we had Chaz, Jazzy back in the, the lineup, but uh, Sanchez, Soler, Cooper, uh, these guys are all cheap too. So you can fit in some of these expensive Dodger bats if you want to. Cooper and uh, who am I missing? Aggie, Aguiar, Aguilar. Um, I think all those guys are, are very viable uh, for Miami, and I, and I like them as a mini stack. Not won't, won't be touching any bats in the Cincinnati-Chicago game. 
Um, I don't mind the, if you want to take some shots with Chris Bryant or another batter too, I just want to remind everybody that Urias is really good when he gets going and he's starting to come into his own. And then you get into the weird one. I didn't actually build any stacks like this yet, but I, I the, the Otani and the Angels, it's hard to stack the Angels when you can't use Otani as a player. It's a really good matchup for Otani. I mean, Kopech in his last start allowed five uh, stolen bases and Otani, if he gets on, probably is going to grab one. Uh, Trout might grab one as well. So I don't like the Angels stack as much. What I think is interesting is on these smaller slates, I've made this case that we see Otani with these incredibly wide range of just awesome outings and then horrible outings. Um, and maybe you take a shot with the White Sox if you wanted to go for a five man that no one's on. That would probably be the one that I think you could just play at no ownership, not competing against anyone here. And I think it's viable. I mean, we've seen Otani get blow, blow up and we've seen him struggle sometimes. So uh, with, with this control. So I think that this is a spot where I would consider the White Sox as an interesting stack on a smaller slate as they're going to probably be the lowest owned team on the slate with, I think, plenty of upside to maybe make that case. So that's sort of what I'm doing. My favorites, though, uh, are going to be a combination of the Minnesota, Miami, and then I'm including some Dodgers in there uh, with Atlanta. That, those are sort of the main things I'm doing tonight. I'm going to try to make live. It's difficult. We know Wednesdays are tough for me. I've got my stuff with my kid, and it's just always a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try to make it work. And good luck to everybody today. I uh, hope we can crush it, and let's make some money. So hopefully hopefully uh, somebody takes one down tonight. Good luck, everybody.